Hi everyone, I'm Christian, working on Squire. Basically it's software that, that runs under the hood to fully optimize your computer's spare resources, whether it's computation, hosting, um, data storage, whatever offers there are for digital commodities out there in the world, um, Squire optimizes them and makes you money on your computer when you're not using it. So it's, uh, and I know I'm gonna regret saying this in a few years, but basically like the super friendly malware um, that just, <laughs> instead of stealing your money and stealing your resources, just gives it all to you. Um, so you're, you're, it's running the background, it's making money, it's very nice. And it's not completely invisible. Um, took a lot of inspiration from Dropbox and Flux especially, but it's just this little guy up here um, that stays completely out of your way. The, the ideal is that you would never notice it um, except for when you get paid, which is where Interledger comes in um, in, the, in the first step is um, pay-ins and payouts. So um, payouts, obviously, a very simple use case where I would like my money out from that, that I've earned. Um, and then pay-ins where it gets a little more interesting when you have things like uh, streaming compute for value, which is one of the upcoming uh, bits of development I'm hoping to work on, um, where you can tightly couple the amount of money you're paying for um, the flops dedicated to you from the network. And so this is when you start thinking about it from the top level, which is a little more on this that kind of looks like a mess, but um, start thinking about it from the top level, which is you have um, compute customers, people that, that want to use this general computation that's out there on consumer devices. Um, and this is an idea that I'm sure you've all heard many times. Um, but done with Interledger, it can be done a lot more nicely and smoothly. Um, so paying you know, for, for a second, for a millisecond of computation you're getting um, in real time, it's something that can be very useful for um, chunk jobs especially as the more parallelizable type of jobs. Um, say if you need to quickly spin up um, a bunch of load balancing connector clusters um, or what have you. Um, or, uh, there aren't a lot of like, machine learning projects here, but um, AI and machine learning stuff, generally pretty parallelizable. It can be done um, on things like this. So then you get some, some nice stuff where, um, and this is where specifically something I'm hoping to get out of this conference is look to see who I can help um, that is, you know, getting eaten up by AWS fees or what have you. Um, basically, if you think of mining as, it's no different from any other job on this network, if you think of mining as um, a public and continuous bid for computation, for your computation, um, you can see that it sort of sets a baseline for, this, this is no rational supplier of compute power will ever let you pay them less than what they could make mining, which right now is something on the order of like half a cent an hour. So it's pretty damn cheap to buy people's compute power on, on Squire. Um, and so the, the target I have can go lower, but the target I have is like a 10x reduction on what it costs on AWS. Again, not for any job, but for things that are mostly paralyzable, chunked, um, sort of self-reliant binaries. And this you know, sophisticated diagram shows you how that all looks. Um, so, what, sorry, what is, uh, go, back, go back please. What is, what is GSP and BCG? Uh, generalized generalized uh, uh, second price uh, and Vicky Clark Groves. Vicky Clark Groves, okay. so just the cool auction cool. mechanism. So if, if anyone is interested, um, it's up, it's running now. Um, keeping it kind of small, again, the, the biggest thing that I'm gonna be doing is developing uh, on in Ledger platforms, um, hopefully with the Strat guys as well as um, whoever is interested in streaming computation for value. Um, and super open to like any other ideas people would have to use this stuff. Um, entering sort of a new stage of, of development. Got it to this point where it's, you know, it's working and everything. Um, but yeah, super open if anyone has any questions, any, any suggestions. Um, happy to talk about more about like weird, cool things that can be done with Interledger and Squire. Thanks. Just in advance, this is less of a question, more of a comment. First of all, awesome presentation. Thank you for uh, showing us this really cool. Um, and, and one thing that, you know, uh, this one reason this resonates for me in particular is because, um, you know, we're offering this like flat rate for content, and a lot of people uh, come to us and they say, like, well, right now I'm getting all this content for free. You know? No, it's not really free. You're, you're giving away your data, and you're being tracked, and you're looking at ads, so yeah. that's how you're paying for it. Um, and I think one of the things that we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to separate all of these different ways that people earn money on the side, like, yeah. you know, by looking at ads and whatnot, 
um, and separate that from the content you want to buy. Because there might be somebody that's fine with giving up their data to, buy, to pay for content and somebody that's not, and that shouldn't depend on what content I want to consume, how I can pay for it, right? And so Intelligent has the potential to essentially separate those two concerns. Like, I always pay for the content with money, and then I can make the money however I want. I can make it by sharing my computing resources, I can make it by watching ads or whatever. And so I really, really love projects like this where it's like a different way to, to pay for things on Intelligent. And that kind of brings money into the ecosystem and helps other projects. So thank you very much. Sure. And one thing I, I forgot to mention, um, another thing on the roadmap I think would be really cool, just because a lot of time you have pretty low levels of value generated, just because the, the nature of the economy right now, uh, the digital economy right now is you know, not that high in terms of like flop dollar ratio. Um, was definitely thinking about uh, integrating with Coil so that Squire Balance would go into Coil and could be used for that stuff. Um, yeah, I think me and Evan were talking about that a little while ago. But yeah. Yeah, so I know this is the topic you're trying to just flip past, but, but it, it, it is, as you said, fascinating. Could you flip back to sure. that slide? Uh, so a generalized second price auction, uh, I'm not familiar with the, um, the, the Vickery Clark Gross, mm -hmm. uh, but a generalized second price auction is all about uh, combination auctions, acquire bidding on combinations of goods. Over here, you're showing one good. What are the combinations of goods, goods that you're building on? Uh, that's on? where you can get into scheduling problems, um, okay. which is where it's, it's who's on at what time and, and does your bid exceed the network's capacity, which in the early days, many bid, bids will consume the entire network capacity, I can imagine, um, versus in later days when you have more nodes, it'd be very difficult to consume the entire network's capacity for computation and what have you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did sort of breeze over this, and it's, it's kind of an implementation level um, nerdy detail, but you know, auctions are auctions. Um, there are better and worse ways to make money on them. Um, in the early days, definitely just focusing, focusing on building the network and, and um, actually producing value for people that are using it. Yeah. You mentioned mining as a base monitor or a base monitor. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so um, this gets into sort of the, the inherent properties of the latent compute power that's out there in the world that I don't think enough people pay attention to. It's not on our computers. We're a bunch of nerds. It's on the average Joe's computer that doesn't use it as much and kind of hates it. And so you have this sort of strange dichotomy where the mass of like the most valuable resource in the world is concentrated in the people that like don't use it, which is naturally the average Joe's computer. Um, and so like, as you've seen sort of from the unilateral design decisions that are all about usability and like simplicity, asking someone what their kilowatt hour price is is not a simple thing. Um, so I think it, it, all that is to say that's a complex, there's a, there's a complex answer to that that's gonna require some business logic and some business thought. My intuition is that pinging um, lowest latency peers, so um, not geographical, but sort of uh, latency-based topography to sort of figure out, all right, this is this area's cost uh, for um, power or what have you. And, um, there, there is money to be made on top of um, uh, the cost for power. Um, it's tight right now, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but you look at what average, average is like 12 kilowatt hours, 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Squires, on my computer, Squires Delta in watts is something like 30, which is something like a baseline of like $3. So I gotta be making more than $3, uh, which you can do, especially when you start adding on general bits for computation. Um, but yeah, all, all that is to say like very much, you're trying to make the perfectly rational supplier of digital commodities out of the average Joe's laptop, and that's a big part of being rational. Yeah. Um. One of the characteristics of a host that contributes to the reputation of that host is uptime. For example, AWS yeah. has a really good reputation partially because it's always up. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, how do you handle uh, nodes on your network spontaneously dropping out, maybe in the middle of a computation? Yeah, great question. Um, so the, the, the question was how do you, it's the fault tolerance question. How do you handle nodes dropping in and out? Um, I think that's a big part of like the, the things that a lot of the really interesting work I'm gonna be doing for the next a lot of years is exactly involved in that question. Um, and and I, the world has not seen enough progress in distributed algorithms that, that handle that. And um, it's like, a, it's a really fun thing to work on, but obviously a struggle. And, and, and in the early days, very much you wanna restrict yourself to algorithms that are fault tolerant or, or can handle stuff like that. Like, as I said, sort of like, um, 
I mean, mining is just like this perfect job, right? It's like, it, it is this perfect bid for computation and more and more things, more and more um, businesses are starting to program for that in mind. Just because if, if again, showing the, the price difference is crazy. There's two orders of magnitude between what you pay on AUS and what the baseline, like what the intuitive worth of compute power is. Um, and so there's just a, a huge amount that'll motivate that algorithmic development um, to the point where like it will, it will happen. Right now, it's very difficult for especially anything that's, that's partially serial um, to be on a network that has a decent amount of drop off, drop on. Um, but that's a big part of what I imagine my next stage of development is, is whoever decides to come and, and try this out is gonna be me doing those algorithm developments to make their, uh, whatever their use is, work well. So is it as much the algorithm as, as well as how the underlying data is going to be packaged to be processed? I mean, if somebody has a workload that they want to use, is it the algorithm that's driving how they package that material? I think a lot of this requires new algorithms. And not necessarily like new algorithms like big scientific research, just like someone's got to take the time to be like, all right, I got to do this in a distributed manner and package it up. And whether that's like, hey, my um, data requirements exceed the local capacity that this node has allocated. Let me distribute it out on some low latency peers. Um, that kind of stuff is like super doable. It's just like take some real dev work, some real dev hours, which is, you know, it's going to be me and, and hopefully some new hires soon. <laughs> Great. Thanks, guys.